want to bring to life what you only dream about, then you've tuned into the right podcast. This is Keep Blooming, and I'm your host, Liz Montigny. Tune in as I encourage you to drop the hustle mentality for hope and act on the dreams God has put on your heart. Like you, I'm doing all the things as a Catholic, a wife, a mom to three boys, and a trained coach. Let's get growing and keep blooming. Hello and welcome to episode 63 of Keep Blooming. I'm your host, Liz Montigny. Today we are talking about creating a vision for your life. And I have three keys to create that vision. Now, you've heard of companies having a vision for their company or organization, and you can do that for yourself in your own life. And you're going to want to do that because in order to set goals that actually convert into reality, you need to know what you're aiming at. And what you're aiming at is that vision for your life. And it doesn't always have to be these big grandiose things, right? The simple life is what the father in heaven most longs for, for all of us. And oftentimes, most of us are not called to these big, huge dreams, but just to live simply. And even in that simpleness, um, we need to know what we're aiming for. So we're going to talk about that today on the podcast. And if you've been listening, you know that I like to start off our conversations in the truth, which is rooted in scripture. So this is from Isaiah 30, 21. In your ears, shall will hear a word behind you. This is the way. Walk in it. When you would turn to the right or the left. Now, I love thinking about this in terms of creating a vision for our lives so we can uh, create goals because this whole, these, this verse just implies that you are in communion with God. You are in a conversation with God and you are in a conversation such that if he speaks to you, you follow his promptings. And that's really what it comes down to when we talk about reaching our goals. We have to do it with the father's heart. We have to do it with God in mind, because ultimately that's, that's always our goal is to be with him in heaven. And in order to do that here on earth, we must do what he's asking of us. So there are three keys I see in creating a vision for your life. So a little bit about um, what a vision is. Okay. It's pretty simple. So I was an executive assistant for years at a big company, and I heard a lot about setting goals, but not a lot about why. So reaching your goals is a paddle if you don't know what you're aiming for or why you're working so hard. Working towards your goals with a picture in mind, your vision, aligns your actions to what's important to you. So companies have vision statements and you can have a vision for your own life, no matter what your vocation or state in life is. For some, talking about creating a vision can feel just like too loosey-goosey or overwhelming or maybe even like a waste of time. Like you just want to get get things done already. But you, and, and still, some of you may have just too many ideas like rolling around in there, right? And you have a hard time narrowing it down. But we know that if we accomplish anything, it's only through God. So he is where we need to begin. So the first thing you're going to want to look to is following who else but Mary and Jesus, right? How do you create a vision for your life with God? In order for us to get to know the heart of the Father, his loving mercy and great wisdom, he's given us Our Lady, Mary, who points us to her son, Jesus. And then Jesus always brings us to the Father. So during Jesus's agony in the garden, he was conformed to the Father's will his prayer in that moment was draining to the point of sweating blood. And he knew that he would 
what he would face physically, spiritually, and mentally would be even harder. Still, he was clear on his vision or mission to bring all of us to the Father, right? He already, that was his job. And he was going to do it no matter what. So while most of us may not be called upon to be literally crucified, our work is always meant for the good of the other and to give glory to God. It will take all of your strength physically, spiritually, and mentally to reach your vision. Not enough people talk about this, right? All you see is all the perfect, beautiful things on social media but it takes hard work and you can't get there alone. You have to do it, do this work with the father. The good news is nothing will be impossible for God, right? As we hear in scripture. And the good news is you have people like me out there who do this for a living and want to help you because when we see you succeed, that's a win for us. So you may not have a moonlit garden to retreat to and pray as Jesus did with the Father, but you do have adoration. You know, you can go to your favorite church or go to your favorite spot outside in a park or wherever it is for you that you can make room to recollect, receive, and respond in the direction God is calling you. And I wanna emphasize, take your time with pondering this vision for your life. Don't rush through it. And you do need the silence and the quiet and and just not only just like physical space, but like that, that mental space of making room for where God is directing you. You have to look inside your heart, right? As a dreamer, I'm a big dreamer. So sometimes I'm tempted to do things because they sound fun, right? Like, why not? Who's stopping me? So I have to ground myself in my vision. As a result, I've um, come up with a simple way to create a vision for your life. So again, you take that time alone and adoration or your favorite spot and you journal and you ponder where God is calling you and what you desire in the four chambers of your heart. So we think of a heart, right? It has four chambers and the upper chambers are closed and the lower chambers, you know, If the upper chambers are closed, excuse me, I'm going back to biology class, the lower chambers can't pump out to the rest of the body. So I like to think of spirituality and rest as the upper chambers because spirituality and rest are what feed the lower chambers, which are home and vocation. And let me explain that a little bit. So spirituality is your union with God, your relationship with him. Okay. And so just taking time to ponder this process, you're in relationship with him. And you're also taking time to rest, right? Now, spirituality and rest, taking time in those areas of your life will actually feed you, feed you in the home area and in the vocation area, right? Because you can't draw on what you don't have. So think of home as your relationships and the beauty and purpose found inside the walls where you live, love, and work, right? It's kind of all encompassing. And rest is just simple. The way you restore and renew your mind, body, and spirit And it's one of those things that most of us put aside, right? It's that elusive self-care that some of us have a really hard time with, but you actually need to schedule it and make an appointment with yourself. And of course, vocation. You can think of that as your work, but it's also your identity, your calling, and your obligations in the body of Christ. So you have those upper chambers 
spirituality and rest, feeding the lower chambers of home and vocation. And these four chambers are just a nice way to focus all of those thoughts about what you want your vision to be, right? All parts of our lives are going to fall in to those four chambers, spirituality, home, rest, vocation. It's all going to go in there somewhere. So, you know, you can just take some time to ponder that. And I want to give you a heads up that I have all of this in my online community. I have a mini course on creating your vision and a mini course on setting goals. And that's all in my online community where you get accompaniment, accountability as you take action. So I'm going to tell you more about that in a bit, but I just want to throw that out there in case you're like, hey, I need some help with this. Okay. And the third thing you're going to do, you know, after you ponder all that, which take some time, (laughs) is step out in faith, right? This is what God asks asks of us daily, right? So you created a vision for your life with God, and it's time to take action on it. So you give yourself a heart checkup based on what you just pondered in those areas of spirituality, rest, home, and vocation. And you take a look at where you are right now, in relation to that vision that you're feeling called to. And then just ask yourself some simple, but you know, maybe it could be hard facing questions of what needs to change in your life? What needs to stop in your life? What needs to start? And you can break those changes down into smaller steps. And those steps can become your goals. That's where you can start. Goals can simply be the changes that you want to make in your life. What you need to stop, what you need to start. And talking about goals is a whole separate thing, (laughs) which we've done before on the podcast. So remember, confidence, momentum, inspiration, that all comes after you take the first step toward the vision for your life. Not when you're overthinking the whole thing, right? Because big pictures can be overwhelming. You have to break them down into the smaller steps or goals to get to your overall vision, right? So if you've already pondered with God on this vision, now it's time to walk in faith with him alongside you. And my prayer for you is that you work hard in silence so you can hear the Lord's direction And let your success be your noise, right? So again, as I said, if this is something you want to dive further into, this is exactly what I'm doing in my online community called, guess what? Keep blooming. And so you can pop in there. There are two membership levels, which is a community member and then a VIP member. VIP members get one hour of coaching with me per month as well as all the other perks of being in the community. So if that's something you want to explore, check out the link in the show notes. And, you know, now is the time to do this, right? We're we're getting to the end of of the year and starting a fresh, brand new baby year. And these are the things that we think about, right? What's gone well this year? What could I change? What am I hoping to incorporate in the new? And this may be just the way to do it. So create that vision for your life with the Father's heart. And let's go back to our scripture verse, which is Isaiah 30, 21. And your ears shall hear a word behind you. This is the way, walk in it. When you would turn to the right or the left. So just think about that. If you you just since we're talking about vision here, use your imagination and envision yourself just pondering in that silence, pondering those four chambers of your heart. And you'll get a word from the Lord, right? And don't worry, I'm not talking about you're going to hear audible words. Some do, but (laughs) it's usually more like something is placed in there just in prayer. And this is the way you walk in it. You step out in faith. 
right? And you would turn to the right or the left, meaning he's directing you. So if you're planning all of this with God the Father, he's going to direct your steps. And you have the saints and Our Lady and Jesus and people like me out here who want to come alongside you and accompany you to reach that vision for your life. All right, let's get growing and keep blooming. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Keep Blooming. I share new content monthly. To be the first to know about my upcoming retreats and latest offerings, become an email subscriber at lizmontignycoaching.com. Have a great day and remember to keep blooming.